evening, everybody. We have, a, no, we have a very interesting subject that I want to, uh, that's an echo. Cut down the echo, please. But before I want to speak, it's important that we cleanse ourselves through the holy blood of Jesus. Amen. What usually happens that when we tackle some of these demonic spirits and powers that are hidden, they will surface and trouble you. It'll trouble you in your mind, in your dream, in some miscom this week, opinions between husband and wife, just stir your flesh up because you are troubling them. Why? Because they like to stay. They found a nesting ground. Are you with me? Are you following? When the fire of God is not there in our lives or in our hearts, our hearts and our soul will become a nesting ground for this familiar spirit. So, I need to take a moment right now to pray with me, asking the Lord to cleanse us, wash us. Let it be the church, let it be your personal life, your home. Amen. Because sometimes we have victory in church, we have defeat in the house. We become spiritual in church. When you go home, it becomes your domain. You become the king or queen. We don't follow God's will at home because I'm so familiar with ruling the house. And so that familiar spirit will wait there. Are you, are you following? We have to establish kingdom in all the things that we do so that you're a single person and you'll have victory wherever you walk. We all have to struggle through until it becomes singular. It's no double standard in our own. Amen. Would you do that? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before the throne of Christ. We ask of you, God, that you will release an authority upon each one of our lives. We plead the blood of Jesus upon each one of our hearts, our properties, our family, our friends, and everything that we know and things that we do with our hands. God, we pray that you will cleanse the church. Cleanse from the head right to the bottom. From the pastoral team to the leadership team to the members. Cleanse every part of the building in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, everything that is familiar in our lives, which is not of the Lord, cleanse it through the blood of Jesus. I pray, God, that this evening the Holy Spirit will release an increased fire and heat upon anything which is not of your will. Habits and patterns and thinking uh, 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 thoughts, Lord. Anything that is not of your will, cleanse it in Jesus' name. Trouble our hearts today that we can save our soul for tomorrow. The Bible says, give no room for the enemy. So Father, we pray in Jesus' name that every room of our hearts are taken over by God. We pray for angelic assistance tonight to watch over the gates as we speak your truth and your words. Give us wisdom, open our hearts, open our understanding. The Bible says wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So help us to experience freedom tonight. We pray for those who are watching online, that the power and the presence of God that is here will touch their hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Work on the speaker. We had a couple of uh, questions, but somehow my heart was tilting towards this uh, uh, subject, overcoming familiar spirit. And that's why it is difficult, because it's familiar. If it's to totally demonic, you will overcome it. You know it's not you. But it's familiar means it's so you, involved in the story. It is so natural. It is so natural that our natural selves take over the fight but the demons sometimes will stand aside. And that is why it's important and critical for us to 
understand how to transform this part of our soul so that we can have power when we pray. Amen. Amen. I saw a video very interestingly uh, in YouTube. One, one man of God, he has a very, I, I think, I don't know, I just saw a few shots. Um, he's casting out demons, right? And he's speaking. He's jeering, he's laughing, he's talking, he's engaging in conversation. And he's making jokes as though he's talking to a friend. And so this is a, some of the things that there are always rules of the spirit life. Especially when the authority is on you, we should not become familiar with the anointing in your life. Because you're engaging with a demon you shouldn't be talking about. Your job is to cast, get out. We don't have to know where they come from, where they are going, which way. They got, I don't want to know. Can you ask a cockroach, how did you enter this house? <laughs> Do you ask this kind of question? No, you don't. But if they are investing somewhere, then you want to know why. Maybe we are callous with putting some food around, dropping things. Usually, when you have toddlers and children in the house, these things will happen because they are eating the drops and stuff like that, you know. Otherwise, when you see just one or two running, you're not going to ask the cockroach where you come from, where you're going, where you're staying. Demons are worse than cockroaches. We don't have to know. Even if they tell the truth, they don't have the right to come and do anything to you. Amen? Amen? So we have to have such a hatred for demonic spirits. Don't enjoy because people are watching. Don't enjoy because God gave you the authority to arrest them and speak to them at that moment. There are a lot of school of thoughts. A lot of people say, okay, if I'm doing wrong, why are they listening to me? That is familiar. Do you understand? You become very familiar, then you don't know. You are losing that age of authority. Don't do anything about it. If you want to really talk, talk to them after they are delivered. Help them to grow up. Not during their possession or whatever else. Because once you start having this conversation, demonic spirits will know you, you know. And so I want to encourage us, familiar spirits are the easiest one to work with in our individual lives. Churches can also, without realizing, become a nesting ground for familiar spirits. While the anointing is still manifesting. Why? The anointing is manifesting when the worship is going on. The preaching is taking place. Done. Two hours. Done. After that, you and I are walking through the property. We are talking to one another. We are talking on the phone. Familiarity takes over, right? It is difficult to remain anointed 24-7. You won't even open your mouth. But when you are talking, our attitude takes over. Familiar spirits will come. Use the very thing they need. Their equipment is our personality. So when we have a very unreformed personality, that becomes their tool. Therefore, do not, let's, let's not celebrate, this is me, this is who you get. Now, I don't want you. We took that you, the old you, and we already throw it into the cross of Calvary. Amen. We have the new you. Amen. Amen. Don't admire your you, oh, this is me. What? Jesus died for you. Have you forgotten about that? So we want God to change us. And change is going to be progressive. I realize as I'm growing up, I'm picking up unnecessary new habits. Now I'm older, I think I know much. So I tend to have to work on those areas as I'm older. When I was younger, I fought younger starved demons. Now as I'm older, I got to fight familiar spirits that may come to work with me, did Rolly, God said, you're much more older now, right? Are you, are you following? Yes. So for each category of our life, we have to work against those familiar spirits that will remove the wisdom of God out of our lives. So that, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't stop. It's not possession. It is familiarity. 
And that's what the enemy does. He uses your very head to counsel you. You want God to tell you things. And that is why the, the word must become central. Sometimes you may doubt, you see, how do I know this is me or you or God? Or, but the word is always God. And if you are not sure, speak to your spiritual elders, whoever they are, who you are committed to, you honor. Speak to them how to have, how to put these pieces together and understand what God is saying to me. Amen? See, when your heart is right and pure, God will bring the right counsel towards you. But when your heart is tainted with greed and self, most often I've seen they will gravitate towards counselors who will say what they want to hear. And the counsel will always be the wrong counsel. I got to keep in mind. Are you following? So I purposely put the assumption of tree of life. We all start with the tree where God is there. And then the good of knowledge and evil is just the next tree, you know. It's very easy. The more we think we know now, we think we can reason everything out. How many of you would agree, the older we are growing, God is just becoming bigger than our growth. Amen. We still cannot understand who God is. We think, now I know that much. Then you realize he's much more. God is bigger. Amen. The word is still like, wow, I thought I grasped it, but I'm still that so much more. Why? Because I grasped the first level, surface level, theoretical level, grammatical level, but there is a level of revelation. The enemy is not afraid of ginosko, which is natural knowledge. That's good. Accumulative knowledge. That's great. But Rhema, revelation knowledge, that's what he's afraid for because you know the right word to bring it as the Lord shows you. Amen. So we have to become so familiar with the scripture. That is why I keep saying over and over again, the Bible says in the end times, Revelation 12, they overcame him through the blood and the word of their testimony. I say, got to have the word in your life. Amen. And the word of God is the word of God. And the word of God must be interpreted as the way the word of God says it. Not what you think it is saying. That means don't rephrase it. Read it simply as what it is and stick to it. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's critical. God wants his people to take his side. You got to take his side and stand with him. Are you ready? Let's go. What is a familiar spirit? Now, this is something that in Jude chapter 1 verse 4, there are many translations, but I wanted to pick up the NIV because it's easy, straightforward. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. Now, they are ungodly people who pervert the grace of God. Now tell me the word pervert. What is that? They twist. They give permission. They'll say it's okay. Why being so strict? They will pervert the grace of God. <sighs> Man, how, have you ever heard that the grace of God can be perverted? Now, here it is written. Paul said you can nullify the grace of God. In other words, put it to no use. When? When you walk in your flesh, when you walk in your own understanding, you will put the grace of God to zero. That means the grace of God is in you, but it's the pump energy is not coming out. You made it into zero in your life. So it is possible to shut down that valve and the pipe and the grace of God is not coming in. So here we find we can pervert the grace of God. Now, this level of perversion is the work of familiar spirits. Because they are very familiar, they know what to do. The older you are, the more senior you are in your spiritual life, if you think you are senior, whatever it is, the bigger demons will come. And they are skillful, master in deception. Okay? Why? Because the Bible says in the end time, even the very elect will be deceived. So those who are coming into that level must be wise and always watch over the word of God. Amen. 
Even if you have the wisdom to question God, don't open your mouth. I find a very interesting effect of cultures affecting opening our mouth thing. In Western culture, you just, you want to give what you think in your mind and you want to empty your head. The Bible says even a fool will vent out all her words and her feelings. That doesn't mean you say everything you want, you sound wise. The Bible calls you fool. Because a man of wisdom will restrain his words and know when to say and when not to say. Because the Bible says sin will not be lacking in many words. Are you following? So whenever there is a lot of words, sin will be present somewhere along the line. So you've got to be mindful because some, the, the enemy will use our very own words to curse our destiny. Okay? Amen? Now if you are following everything, I'm saying you've got to shake your head. Oh yeah. So you've got to sp- work the spring out. Are you? Okay? I want, it, I, I want these things to go inside tonight. Now they are ungodly people. How many times would you even dare to say someone, look at some people and they're just ungodly? Their opinion doesn't really matter because they pervert the grace of God. How many times you dare? Usually we don't. You see, in the, in the Eastern culture, we usually don't open our mouth and speak to our elders in any rude way. If you have something, just be quiet. So when God is talking, we, we easily know how to navigate through the things. You just don't open and say much. But in Western culture, we just have to say everything out and that interferes your understanding of God's authority. When to be quiet and when to say it out, you see. And sometimes the problem I find in some of the school of thought where they say prophecy works at the level of your imagination and they call it sanctified imagination. I want you to be very careful about this thing. Are you that level, your imagination is so sanctified you can allow to think this is what God is saying? People who train for prophecy, they enter to some schools. Okay, close your eyes. Tell me what you think about this brother now. He's good, he's great. Okay, this is what the Lord is saying to you. I feel you are good and you are great. Okay, that's his word from God. Is it, is it true? That's how people are being trained. They operate in the realm of their mind which is the most dangerous field because all battles are taking place here. You cannot touch that area. The more you know you are vulnerable, the less you must depend on the mind. And that is why in the old school of training, we teach people, you only wait and ask God, Lord, speak to me after going through prayer, going through worship, sanctify your heart, sanctify your mind for one hour or two. And sometimes it takes a time to day fast. All depends on how polluted this mind is. When you feel, okay, God is coming all over me now. My heart is warming up. Then now you are ready to hear the Lord, you see. Are you following? It is important that we understand and we treat holy things as holy. So because they use the word called sanctified imagination. How can the, your, our mind be sanctified when you feel all this guilt coming through? So you've got to allow this Holy Spirit to work first. And that is where the error of thinking, this is what God is saying when they're actually assuming their own soul speaking to them. Because if it was God, then it will be accompanied with faith in what you think God is telling you to do. When faith is not accompanying the very thing that you think, then it cannot necessarily be God. It is your soul speaking to you. You understand? I didn't fast all this time to let your soul speak to you, right? It can speak to you anytime. You're fasting and seeking God so that your spirit man can pick up information from God. So I wanted to discard certain things, things that you, you, you have learned. It is so easy. In fact, my daughter just told me they went to a camp, school camp. And this, okay, tell me, write everything. This person is thinking, so it's beautiful and awesome and she's kind. And I'm just quoting the attributes of this person. Okay, write in letter, this is what God is saying. How can this be God? 
Are you following? There is a part of God which is so holy, we should not tread upon. There is a part of God, He is a Father, you can know Him. So, I cannot tell you which is which, you have to tread carefully when you're coming into the presence of God. Now, if you treat God as holy, and you know how God comes, this is God, when He comes over you, there is a physical sign somehow, then demonic spirits will not lie to you. Because you know the signs. When the Lord comes, how do your body respond to it? When a real anointing comes, you'll have some goosebumps, warmness, you'll start breaking down, you are crying, because you know you have stepped into the arena of God. Okay? If you don't understand this, then every time demonic deception comes in, unfamiliar, ungodly people come, you will think they are saying the things of God to you. Okay? In this end time, it's, it's a time of deception, so we've got to be wise. Now, sometimes if you don't know, do the only thing you have to do. Bring it to the counselors that God has appointed over your life. And that's a simple thing to do, right? Everybody tells me only number one. Pastor, I know you are busy. Okay. You're not waiting to see me walking down 74 doing nothing aimlessly. Oh, pastor, you're free. Can I ask you something? Are you waiting for that? Or you're going to see me five days a week in Walmart, just walking around, shopping, drinking, taking up some cake, and all the time you see me in Walmart, oh, pastor must be free. Are you following? Are you following or not? So I wanted to kill these lies in your mind. You don't want to call me because you are reluctant to call me, not because I'm busy. I have to be busy because I'm a man of God. I'm always busy. My mother also did the same thing. You're always busy, which is a good, good thing. I'm always doing something, whether it's God, whether home, or whether I'm disturbing Angeline, whatever it is. I'm always doing something. Amen. See? <laughs> Are you following? So please kick this out. A doctor is always busy because he's a doctor. But when you're sick, when you're coming through, he has to attend to you. And those in the ER, bro, they, they've got special skills, man. They are handling 10 people all bleeding out and they still know what to do. That's their job. Oh, a doctor, you are busy. It's okay, I'll bleed to death. I'll see you tomorrow. Huh? Your job is to call. My job is to assign who can handle what they, are, what they are going through. Sometimes it may not require me. It is simple enough for someone else in the church to handle. At least your situation is it's channeled to someone to help you what you're feeling through. Amen. So do not allow familiar spirit to steal your breakthrough. Sometimes it's like that. Familiar spirits will steal your breakthrough. Some people are ungodly. Look at what it's saying. They sleep secretly inside. And, and they, are, they pervert the, the grace of God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ our only sovereign Lord. Now, Amplified Bible says, they will sneak in by the side door. I wrote about this in one of my books. How the enemy will bring wrong deceptional uh, experiences Wrong teachers, they will sleep in by the side door and they will leave by the side door. Meaning to say, while you are unaware, they will sleep in and look out for the area that you need to hear. Poor thing. I encourage you. <clears throat> People are so vulnerable. The moment you say, poor thing, I see you break it. Ah! I start crying again. Don't cry to the wrong person. Hello? Cry to the right person. The right person will have the word of the Lord. The wrong person will give you tissue. Huh? Are you with me? Yes. If you want tissues, go to Walmart. Get it yourself. You got to have the word of the Lord. Because you are crying to have your freedom come through. You are not looking for sympathies. You are looking for spiritual freedoms. Amen. Amen. Certain individuals whose condemnations were written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. The book of Jude talks about the three types of people will come, but that is not what we're going to do tonight. What is a familiar spirit? Now look at this. 
A familiar spirit could be a household familiarity at home. When we go at home, we become default behavior. This is my house, this is who I am, this is my father, mother, they know who I am and it's okay to fight and blah. That, that's all good. But then the demonic spirits will lodge inside the house. Some people will say, okay, wait till we go home, we'll settle it. And all the flesh is waiting to manifest in the house. Your house is a place where God's presence is more there than you are in church, correct? Then you must know how to secure the place in the presence of God. Your house is not a battleground. It's a place of solution, peace, and the wisdom of God. Your house must become a place of encounter, not a place for your flesh to take over. Are you following? Amen. Okay, one person say amen. All the others are still wondering what I'm talking about. Are you with me or not? Yes. Tell, your, tell your neighbor, pastor's talking to you now. <laughs> Familiar spirit are familiar with the pattern of your thoughts. Don't grow up and be happy with this is who I am. Let your thought patterns, the script must be rewritten. In counseling, there is a theory of our inner script being rewritten. You'll pay a lot of money to let someone walk you through that, to rewrite. But God is the first person who rewrites your inner script in your life. Amen. You're bought with the blood of Jesus. So our patterns of thoughts, patterns of defeat, condemnation, guilt, I'm not worthy, anger, this pattern of thoughts will kick in when you become familiar, when you let down your guards, when you want to feel today is my lousy day, so I allow my lousy feelings to come back to me. Sometimes people kill themselves over just five minutes of lousy thoughts. That's that one moment they kill themselves. Are you with me? Do you know sometimes divorces takes place in that five minutes of conversation? Okay, I'm done. I'm walking out. Familiar spirits will take over. I wanted to think about this very carefully. Our response and trigger points. Because we are very familiar. There are trigger points in all of us. Now, I'm not asking all of us to become a monster or a robot or, you know, that I don't have feelings. No, we all do. I, I, we want us to walk through our own script where there are weaknesses. Let God's love take over those patterns of thoughts. I don't know what, how it works for you. You got to work with it. Because the Bible says in the end times, it's much more difficult to be a child of God. Brother will betray the brother. <laughs> that time is going to come. It's going to be much more difficult, bro. We, we may or may not be able to gather in a church. We possibly may be hunted, hungry, no food, not enough. The worst part of us will be stirred, provoked. Some of us, the moment you don't eat, you pass your meal time, you become a lion in the zoo, rolling, angry at everybody for no reason. On those days, it's going to be like that. And so God wants us to tame. You know, the child of God, even when you don't have food, God wants us to give to someone, you know. Right. Imagine that level. Oh, my goodness. Imagine that level. Supernaturally sustained. I don't know, but this is what every generation has gone through this. We are so blessed, not yet. The past generation have gone through World War I, World War II, Great Depression. They all have been through. They have learned to eat less and still survive. And look at those folks, bro. You can see the joy of the Lord in their faces. Can you believe that? All they had was potato soup. And they are so happy for the provisions of God. And here we have all kinds of food. Yet we are cursing out every day. You know. You think about it, how ungrateful we have become. So these are familiar patterns, trigger points, response level. You got to watch over our, our resident sins, temptation, dark secret areas, struggles, personal struggles, private struggles that trigger certain things. We all will have struggles. We all do. We got to find out, is it triggering 
familiar demonic spirits that is waiting. Wait till this fellow. Sometimes you got to be mindful of the songs we are listening. It triggers certain emotions out. It opens the door of familiar songs. If let's say you went through a breakup and you know the certain song was playing, or you love to hear, and you listen to those songs, it opens up your, the can of your emotions again. So just walk away from ungodly songs. You don't have to really select. Just select God's songs. How's that? Amen. Just forget about this, bro. You have, you have done your time. We don't have to listen to all this. Amen. You don't have to. You can listen to God's songs. So you don't worry about selection. It just goes through. And so there are this kind of sins. And, and the sin so easily triggers us. Struggles. Familiar friends of secret sins. You know, when you want to drink, they know who to call. People know who to call if they want to have sex. People know who to call if they want to commit a crime. Familiar friends. Let's do something. Familiarity. And so they will wait in darkness. Now we are redeemed. We came out of those kind of lifestyle. We cannot go into, some people are not killing anybody, but every day they are killing people in their mind. The Bible says, if you get angry for no reason, you're killing someone, you're coming to murder, isn't it? You got to watch over, you got to take Jesus seriously. Are you following? When you think about that for a minute, what is familiar spirit? Now, they work with your natural personality. So that it doesn't look possession. This is your natural self. If you're given to anger, your anger will just come through. If you're a peaceful person, your peace will be there. If you're a person, wait for 10 minutes and then you become tigerous or tiger, then that kicks in. Or you are a person who just walk away. Doesn't matter. You don't want to sit down. You don't deal with things. It becomes very natural personality. That is why, my brothers and sisters, please do not celebrate where you come from, what you do, because some of the things we come from, in every culture around the world, there are bad stuff. Every culture has it. Okay? One of the pastor friends I had, he, he died. They were a godly family. They are a ministerial family. He, he, he does a lot of miracle evangelism in um, Africa. Man, 20,000, 30,000 people in crusades and people being healed. Blind eyes, seeing, deaf ears. It's just norm. He, he likes drinking coffee, you know. But when he came back from one of these trips and suddenly for one month, I think more than one month, about six months, I think, husband and wife went through such differences in their relationships to a point that the wife moved out of the house. Nobody knew this. It was secretly going on. I was, I was close to the family, so I came to know all this. You know, I was uh, probably 17, 18 years old. They, they, uh, so they, she secretly moved out. So one day I went, I went there to pray. Went to the house, he was just talking, pouring, you know, just telling all this is happening. I was praying and praying and praying, and the Lord showed me the spirit of war. Okay, spirit of war. So I was just praying through, break the spirit, blah, blah, blah. And then when I just sat down to have a drink, right on this wall, when he went to one of these African trips, uh, the village hitman uh, gave a gift. That was the Zulu tribe, bow and arrow that they brought, which was actually used in a war. See what happens when you bring certain familiar objects and you put it in the house. This cultural thing which is a warrior's thing for them. But for you when you're not familiar, that demonic spirit that's attached to it will come towards you. Now in the same way, in the same way, put a clause, in the same way, I've mentioned this a couple of times I'm saying again, I've noticed in some of the spiritual warfare teaching by respected teachers in America, I've noticed a trend. They are, they are reading many books of pastors or prophetic teachers, 
prayer warriors from Africa where there are thousand witchcraft stuff and they are teaching in America to ordinary folks thousand stuff how to overcome stuff when you don't have those kind of problems. What happens is when you invoke certain things when it's not there, you enter into a realm where your spirit is not ready for all that. And then those demonic powers will visit you in the night. Okay? Just be mindful. Don't jump into the wagon. I, I, I've read every book. And every book has certain things that invokes. I remember the very first visitation that I had for three and a half hours when I saw the spirit of Jezebel that was bound for three and a half hours. And the Lord was speaking to me, and I wrote that in the book of the prophets. And, and, and uh, the Lord said, <clears throat> the spirit of Jezebel is just a woman who died. She was possessed by a demonic spirit. And the Lord told me the, the name of that spirit she was possessed, and then that name is coded in the Bible. And then he wrote, and I wrote it in a paper, and he said, never speak about it. Don't teach about it to anybody. Because the moment you teach those things, that spirits now can see you. You see. When you pray about things when you're not familiar, when you bind things you're not supposed to be binding. Some people bind principalities and powers and they have no clue what you're talking about. Just for your headache. I bind the principalities and powers so that I'll have a... They've got nothing to do. It's just your headache. Are you following? Because we, we, we sound clever, you see. We invoke certain spirits. So, but, but, please be careful. Stick on to the word. Now, I'm not saying don't buy. Now, if you are in Africa, then you need all these guys to teach us. They are the spiritual warfare heroes. They have done it. They know what works there. Here, you got to find the local heroes to teach you how to fight here. One of the demonic powers that has worked here is in the religion called self. Self-oriented, self-ego, self-pride, self-importance, philosophy that questions the existence of God. The self. It got to work. Now if you go to India, there's no clue what is self because they have to kill self. Now there are different demons at work. Every region have different demonic powers at work. Are you, are you following Amen? Okay. So, uh, my natural personality. What is your natural personality? Familiar friends who will invoke certain familiar patterns in our behavior patterns, soul patterns. This is my thought. This is who I, when I'm down, I trigger it and it becomes, it overwhelms you, it takes over you. And some people say, okay, you know, if it's not for God, I won't be doing. Tell me if it's not for God, where will you be today? You see, I wanted to answer these kind of questions. There is a very strong, sadly alarming um, trend. Just last year alone, this is 24, 23 alone, alarming trend of pastors living ministry. That's number one. Number two. An alarming trend, I, I just don't want to give you facts and figures, because then I'll talk about that, you know, I try not to. Alarming trend in now where some of these guys wanted to even kill themselves over the stress of the ministry. My question is, is okay, yeah, I'm sorry to hear all of this, but are you really called by God? Nobody dares to ask this question, you see. There are certain vocations you must be called by God. Now, everybody is called by God. That's a different story. When you are in the front lines, you must have more than just a belief. You must be called by God. Especially when you are entering into certain areas where demonic powers are stronger. And if you plan a church there, you better know that God has called you there. He will watch over your gates. Are you, are you following? I've helped pastor friends who have planted churches in locations they shouldn't be oh yeah but god is with us and they go with that assumption and they have never found peace in their life their marriage breaks the church breaks 
fall into sin, adultery, fornication, you name it. Every uncleanness that the enemy can unleash, it will come against them. Okay? So this, then there is a familiar spirit of the secrets of the dark. You know, certain demonic spirits get activated at a certain times of the hour. When they want to kill someone, they will plan in the dark. They'll commit sexual sins, they will commit in the dark. They'll look out for dark spots and dark spaces. They look out for certain times, time zones. It releases, they unleash demonic powers. Certain gray area of our lives that entraps us. Now, gray areas are areas that we have not made a firm decision to surrender to God. That, those are gray areas. We know it's wrong, but I'm not willing to give in yet. So it's a gray area. There are no absolutes. It's a gray area. Every church, especially in the ministry, we must have certain absolutes. This is the way we're going to do. This is the word of God. There is no two things about it. Now I wanted to know that if we become familiar with people's hurt, you will never become familiar with the spirit of victory. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you don't carry the spirit of victory, hurts will bring you behind. Victory will bring you forward. You got to know the grace that is given to us. Amen? It's no point that when you're bleeding, I bring a bandage, but I don't know how to dress your wound. It's as good as dying. Then you will know the person you're talking to, whether you're recovering or not. If you're not recovering and not becoming stronger, that means that person doesn't carry the grace to heal your heart. They're just listening sympathetically. Have you noticed that when you want to, when people, gossipers want to pour their heart, they will always look for the ones who don't have anything to do. Always free in your mind. They look for someone to dump their rubbish in. Are you with me? You got to pray, uh, find yourself, are you a dumping ground? If they want to dump things, ask them to go to the other side, you know, Cleveland County area, go and dump. Don't, don't dump in my mind because I'm already going through enough. Amen? Amen? After five minutes, it's becoming too heavy, let us pray. Stops there. It stops there. Amen? Amen. You got to put your defense very strong enough. Gray areas of our life that entraps us. Sometimes we cannot help when I'm with pastor friends and we talk about some, some pastors going through a challenging time, sin, or whatever not. After five, ten minutes or th whatever minutes we talk, I always end up that conversation, let us pray for the pastor now. It, because we just talked about someone when you're standing strong. Imagine when you're going through that controversy and you can't defend and left and right now some pastors are going through this you know td jakes bro uh, let's not talk what is really going on our job is to pray the enemy is targeting all the big guns now we got to pray then it's not fun being who they are you know you just don't know when it's right and what is wrong i'm telling you why some of these fellas are getting into problem one of the reasons i can easily Point of thing and tell you because every time you do things, men of God think they are celebrities where you have to have camera following you, everything you do. That's why you end up in problems. You got to remember you're a celebrity up there. You're a man of God. Come down, you're just a normal person. Walk away from celebritism. Walk away from attention. Walk away from uh, a photo. Sometimes guys, when, when they are with me, when they want to take photo, when we are eating and all that, you can take but don't upload. That's a... That's the decision we must make because we want certain privacy. I don't understand why people think others are interested because you are drinking some juice today. Great juice, upload. Nobody is paying you for that, you know. Why do you have to tell everybody what juice you are drinking? Huh? Okay. So, gray areas, the life that. Now, look at the Bible. Are you, are you learning something now? Now, this is just the intro, huh? Amen. Are you ready or not? This, what time is it? Five, okay. 
Hebrews 12, 1, Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne the testimony to the truth, now let us all read the red lines. Number one, two, three, go. Let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, unnecessary weight, that sin which so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to us and tangles us. Look at that. This is amplified. What is the sin that is clinging to you very easily? All that is entangling you all the time. But let us run with patient endurance, steady and active persistence, the appointed race of the, uh, the cause of the race that is set before us. So this is the clue. When your heart and mind is set that you don't want to run the race of God, then this sin that is holding on to you will never let you go. Or the flip side of thinking, because this sin is never letting you go, your heart is never into the race of God. I want you to decide today, if you want to have victory, you must put your energy towards God's race and start running for it. When you are running for God's race, ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you, when you are running for God's grace and the things that God has given to you, you have to double time your commitment. Amen. Yes. You cannot say I'm sold out for God when you're just doing things for Sunday. That's not sold out for God. You're just part-time for God. Right. You're not sold out. You know what it means sold out? It means you are 24-7. Mm -hmm. That's what sold out. Don't, don't sing those songs. I'm sold out for God. Bro, I'm living for Jesus. Are you sure? I can't get you after office hours, man. Daytime you say you're working. At night you say you've got family. Then... So I got to go to the homeless, the destitute, the roadside. Those are guys who are willing to serve. I got a family. What are you talking about? God gave you the family. You honor God. It's a blessing to go to say you have a house, you know. It's a blessing. And the house is not running anywhere. It is okay to do double time for Jesus. Oh, I just came back from work. Praise God. Hit the road, bro. Now God is calling you. Amen. You see, we are not willing to double time, but we want God's double blessings. I want you to think about your own soul because the Bible says, giving that shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall the Lord pour it back to you, isn't it? Yes. So what is the measure am I giving? I want you to understand, we have to strip off. Strip off is a hard work. Throwing aside is a hard work. Understanding what is that sin which is easily putting me down. It's a hard work. Let's say you have a past background of flirtatious talk. You know which girl to call, which boy to talk. You know the conversation somehow will lead towards flirtation talking. You know that girl, that person, you have all these data. My data is just too old. I don't have time. I can't even remember. They are dead. They are probably 75 years old now. <laughs> my data is all gone so I just flirt Evangeline that's all I do <laughs> amen I want to think about it for a minute bro if you don't set your heart in a race when the moment the mind is doing nothing it will go back to familiar grounds yeah. you see the heart of man has a destiny inside the moment God sets you free from the past, you got to set this heart towards God and got to run it. Never mind if you have to go back late after work and come back to the house of God and do stuff, go back home tired, next day is work. You know, at least you are tired for Jesus Christ. You're not tired for the world. You're not, you did not eat for three hours. Oh, so tired. You, you, know. you didn't do that. You served the Lord. I know sometimes I come back from meetings when I was in Singapore because those Singapore meetings are long hours. We pray for 200, 300 people a night. You come back, there are times that I come back at one in the morning. You'll be so tired. Eat something quickly because I, you know, dinner I'll miss all the way. Children all will be sleeping. Angeline will be sleeping uh, because she, you know, she was working. 
And, uh, but there will be always be a joy. I served the Lord. I gave him my best. And I came back. I didn't give it to the world. But when I was working, I'll do overtimes. I'll come back. And then I'll have to serve God or whatever else I have to do. Prepare, read the Bible, prepare my messages. I'll sleep at two in the morning. Next day morning is work. I've done the drill. You got to know we all have done it. Whether children are born, children are not born. We have children, they are standing, whatever not. We have done the drill. And God looks at your heart and he will bless you accordingly. Amen. You following? Now there is another thing about familiar spirit, Leviticus chapter 10, verse 10. You are to distinguish between the holy and the common, between the unclean and the clean. You have to have a very clear line of understanding what is God and what is not. What is holy and what is not. What is clean and what is unclean. God wants us to have these distinguishing factors. You know, sometimes when you talk to certain people, you'll just provoke their anger comes into you because they carry this air all the time. Some carry an unhappy spirit. Everything they talk, they are grumbling about everything. Whinging about everything under the sun. And, 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 you, and it will just take three seconds for them to open the story and they start their rubbish bank. They want to unload. You know, when you speak to unclean people, your mind becomes unclean. Is it, but, but we have to, right? No, we choose who we have to. You have to. I got to minister to people. Then those are the things. Not familiar friends, but ministry people that you are dealing with. You are helping out to carry this load out. There was this uh, man of God that I heard. Now this really happened. And he came out in Charisma Magazine years ago, more than 25 years ago. They were doing ministry among the... Uh, his burden was, you know, he was involved in many, many prostitutions and he was pimped before. And then when he accepted Christ, he wanted to uh, preach the gospel to these uh, prostitutes and bring the gospel. They all started holy, very nice. And, and then he, he kept on going back to the same familiar grounds where these girls will hang out. It's only a matter of time, man, when he fell. You got to understand. A man is a man, a woman is a woman. You'll be attracted whether you're left or right. It will be. When you bring these together, attraction will take place. Our job is to stay away. Uh, who will save them? God will send. Don't worry about it. God has millions of people to do the job. So we allow certain times a zealousness to come in without wisdom. Amen? Okay. Now there are familiar places in the night. Proverbs chapter 7. Now before I go to other stuff, I want to show you first. I have seen among the simple. Proverbs chapter 7 is a great chapter. I love it. I perceive among the youths a man, a young man. Can you read that for me? A young man what? Passing along the street near her corner. Taking the road towards a house. You know what you'll do? Enough, you're doing that. Lord, please help me. I don't want her to stand there. Lord, please help me. You know she will be standing there. That is why you're walking down that street. Lacking sense, see. We have, if you have done it, we've been, you know there is sin along the road and don't pray. When you're, don't bumbo jumbo. It is going to happen. There will always be a time where you say, God, please forgive me. I did not know what you're doing. And then there are other times in your life, I knew this is sin. I did it. Lord, please forgive me. Isn't it? You cannot keep on saying, I did not know what I was doing. Sometimes you actually, you knew. And the Bible says in the ni verse 9, in the twilight, in the evening, now I want you to pay attention, at the time of night and darkness. Do you see that? So there are certain demonic powers that only be released in the time of darkness. They, they, they have a time capsule in them. It's a time schedule. It opens up, it comes in the night. Certain demonic powers will only attack you in your sleep because they work in the night hours. Certain demonic manifestation only happens when it's dark. Crowded, dark, it happens. They are night duty demons. They, they do that. They operate, they live in hell, gross darkness. So they operate whenever there is darkness. That is why our, our life and our, our house must be full of light. Are you following? 
He got to work on this, man. He got to deal with those things, okay? Now, individual, you got to deal with our hearts and praise God, and then you'll get married, then you'll have children, and the children will experience darkness. And then you find that the house is full of light, that room, this room is full of darkness, because the children are bringing darkness inside. You have to decide whose house this belongs to. Rules of the game kicks in. What is darkness? What is not? What is okay? What is not? <laughs> the other day I mentioned, sadly, you know, some of the celebrities today have openly confessed demonic and witchcraft worshippers. And yet we are hoo-ha over them. Why? Why can't you step around? Because God wants you to draw between what is holy and what is unholy. You see. So families get divided. Children get divided. They're all running after this singer. This is the most popular singer. I think all of us can talk about singers in every season of our life, isn't it? They came, they went, they died, they kill themselves, they overdose or whatever not. Because the demons, when they have done with you, they'll kill you. We, we cry over one life that died. You know how many millions died? For overdosing themselves, listening to some songs. Nobody accounts for that. I want you to think about it. Certain demonic powers comes when you think being simple is the great deal. Be simple but not foolish, isn't it? I'm just a simple guy. Nice to hear if you're excusing a certain hidden lifestyle. And think about it for a minute. I want, to t I want us to take responsibility tonight. Amen? Are you okay? Let's take certain responsibility. I'm not saying uh, sometimes no matter how strong we become, we are still human. I understand that part of it. But at least you're not easily vulnerable. Okay. Now, I want to share with you three Greek words, which in this passage that surprised me as well. Luke chapter 11 verse 34. Your eye is the lamb of your body when your eye... Your conscience, okay, amplified, is sound and fulfilling its office. Your body is full of light. But when it's not sound, it's not fulfilling its office, your body is full of darkness. Now Jesus said this, you know, your eye is the lamb of your body. That means when you see the right thing, your body responds to the right thing. When you see the wrong thing, it responds to the wrong thing. In fact, when you see the wrong thing, your body is full of darkness now. Now, each one of us will reinterpret what it means to you. You can say, I'm seeing unholy things, your body responds to it. You are seeing killing and blah, 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 your, your body responds to it. Sometimes it's a matter of personal holiness. But then there is a challenge here. Look, Luke eleven thirty four, the word darkness is from the Greek word skotenios, moral ignorance. It has to do with moral authority. Then I show you another scripture. Same chapter, next verse. Be careful therefore that the light that is in you is not darkness. Now who is saying these words? Come on. Oh, it's very difficult. Only one name. Who said this? He's saying to me and you, be careful that the light is in you, it's not darkness. You talk about familiar spirit, let's go for the game. Be careful that the light that you are carrying is actually not darkness. It is possible to think you're saying the right thing, but it's coming from the realm of darkness. Peter said, Jesus, I don't want you to go to the cross. What did he say, Jesus said? Now, how would you feel if you are one of the disciples? How would you feel as a pastor if I will tell you something, the same lines at the most critical moment of your concern, and I said that because I was addressing the demon. When you leave the church, you'll tear the church apart by what I said. You know what my pastor told me? He said, get thee behind me, Satan. You know what? Every, the whole town will say, how can a pastor even talk like that? I'm just a pastor. This savior that we have said those things. Are you going to be offended? 
Now, this Greek word darkness, from the same family, skotos, means shadiness, obscurity, and a lack of integrity. This word has a connotation of lying and speaking with double tongue. Be careful, therefore, that the light that is in you doesn't become darkness. Do you know when I will lie? When I know you are trusting me. Isn't it? Then I will start lying. When I will lie to you, when I know you will never verify me because you trust me. So I'll start lying to you. When will I divide a family? When I know this family is already divided. No matter what I say, they will not go and verify the other person. So I can plan my lies. God is saying, be careful that the light you carry doesn't become darkness. All familiar spirits at work. Familiar spirits will lodge itself through friendships. We got to remember, am I a blessing or am I a curse? What am I doing when I'm attaching? Am I drawing, draining them or am I adding strength to them? You got to think about this very carefully, you see. If you are vulnerable, you know, nowadays we are not, we don't think twice. It's as though wearing a mask has become part of a person's handbag. I, I'm not sure why. The moment they are sick, wearing a mask. Years ago, we were sick, you didn't wear a mask. Suddenly now, we become so conscious of that. You know? And the moment you wear a mask, oh, maybe it's a COVID. No, it's just a flu. It's okay to wear a mask. I'm just making a statement. The Bible says this part of this Greek word, the second darkness, has to do with lack of integrity. I want you to look at the third one. John chapter 1 verse 5. Now this is all the word darkness. And the light shines on in the darkness, for the darkness has never overpowered it. Are you listening? That means the darkness has no power to absorb the light. It is unreceptive. In other words, when the light of God is shining, no darkness can overtake that. Now this word, Darkness, Greek word Scotia, not being fully surrendered to the Lord. That's what this word darkness means. It's scary when your life is not fully surrendered to the Lord, darkness will always try to pull you out. You will forever will be saying, I don't understand what God is telling me. Because he's manifesting the light and the darkness within doesn't comprehend it. A life that is not fully surrendered. So when you put these three Greek words together, now I'm talking about familiar spirit. Are you following me? You're following, right? We are studying on familiar spirits. When you put these three words together, there is a warning. Now these are the gray areas we will easily overlook. First is the area of moral and ignorance. Everything about moral factors, well, that's okay. Just pretend, ignore, oh, well, they are weak. But God says, I want you to draw a line which is what is common, what is uncommon, what is holy, what is not holy. This is sin and that is not. It's just a simple line. Sometimes we are afraid to lose our friends. Number two, Luke 11.35 now says, this level of darkness has to do with lack of integrity in what I say, what I do, what I speak. Let your yes be yes, let your no be no. If you say you're coming, you're coming. Don't say coming. And many church members do that, man, bro. When we stand before heaven, bro, ah, I'll be there, pastor. And they'll never attend to their calls after that. Why? Because you just don't have the heart to say no to the pastor or no to a church appointment. But don't you know that God is watching you? It's not your words, it's your personality that has darkness in it. It creates a lack of integrity. So you know that this person will be written as people who we can't trust. So don't call them in times of your need. Now, having been a pastor for almost now 40 years, I've seen some of these personalities, when they pray, their prayers are never answered. Because a double-minded man cannot get anything from God. You see. So God wants us to have 
inner congruence in our own walk. Don't make big promises. Make small one. If you say yes, it's yes. If you say you're coming, you're coming. Some of the fa- India is notorious for this personality. Because if you say no, they will never let you go. So I'll say yes, but don't appear. <laughs> Just don't go. They'll be okay. Just say yes and let it go. But God minds it, you see. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Yes. Now if Jesus said it to the Jews, that means they too have a very obliging community. Their culture is very obliging to a point that Jesus has to cut the grain and say, listen, I want you to have moral integrity in who you are. If your yes is yes, your no is no. It takes a lot of uh, strength to become that person. But I wanted to start becoming that person. You can't just overnight become that one. Because you know, some of us, we have to go through life where we just have to please everybody. To come somewhere in your life. You cannot say no. But this is my amusement. Are you ready to hear my amusement? We say yes to the world all the time. We have learned to say no to God all the time. If your boss, while you are picking up your back and going home, say, sorry, now today everybody has to work. Let's go. Call your home, sorry. Got overtime, I have to do it. It's so easy. You don't have to ask anybody's permission at home because you lose your job. But if it's church, I've got to ask your mother, you've got to ask your father, you've got to ask your mother's grave, bro, you've got to ask everybody. And I think I know I've got to stay home today. Huh? God, church, which is his house, has to go through your community of consultation. Where else it is the world, you've got to ask nobody. Where is your heart and where is your kingdom? You want to see your people of God? Let's take the stand, bro. Let's go through the fire and take the stand. I'm not saying you, you, you know, shouldn't rest. You should. But you cannot have double standards, are you? You cannot all the time compromise yourself. God is counting for people today. He will allow things in your life where he's, he's looking whether you're going to fight with the armor or you're going to lick the water like a dog. Remember Gideon? You know, that story tells us in every miracle there is a quota. And it, I pray that it's you at that point. Familiar spirits are always looking down to bring us down. The church must be a place where God is gathering his people. Amen. Amen. But sometimes the church becomes a party place. In all my years of ministry, I've always put food, the secondary importance in our church ministry work. In all the churches that I've now given over to people and walk away, and they are hungry monsters who made food as a priority now, the churches are in trouble. You may ask why. Because food stirs the appetites of men. A church has to be gathered in the center of God's spirit. Not just food. Food is praise God. But it's not the center of why we are in the house of God. Amen. Bro, I I love to fellowship. Come on, man. Let's have some body together. Praise God for that. But it has to become godly. It has to be God-centered. You got to keep this in mind. I remember one family just left the church. They said, oh, we are in this church. We will die fasting and praying. Isn't that good? You go go straight to heaven. It's a good way of dying, bro. (laughs) They just left the church. I couldn't believe someone leaving the church because you're fasting and praying. You should be staying because we are godly. (laughs) Bro, the yoga guru tells you not to eat, you're following it. I'm telling you fast, you don't want to come. (laughs) I'm going through a 21 fast schedule. What? Who told you that? The guru. Some health plan thing. God has been telling all the time. You see, you want your body to benefit, but you are starving your spirit, man. God wants certain things for you to benefit your spirit. And that's what Paul said. Bodily workout is great, but godliness workout is better. 
I got it. You got to work those things out. Can you do that? Yes. Okay. Now I want you to open up to certain points of attack. These are familiar spirit. Are you learning something tonight? Yes. Familiar spirit. How does familiar spirit come? Number one, they can come through the land. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 8. See that I've set the land before you. Go in and take possession of the land. That the Lord saw to your fathers. In other words, he made a promise. To Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. To give to them to their offspring after them. So when God tells you to go and fight over and take over. That means all the demonic powers that is in the land. It is your job to clean them up and overtake them. Are you following? Now, this kind of promises will only activate itself when you have the heart to possess what God has given to you. Sometimes certain demonic powers, they stay in certain locations. It's their land. Some of the problems we have in, in, in uh, smaller countries like Singapore and some of the places that I've ministered, you know, those days, certain uh, a landscape used to be a cemetery. Do you say cemetery or cemetery or cemetery? Cemetery. 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 Ah. It used to be like that. And then development comes up, say 15 years, 20 years have gone, 50 years have passed, and you know, they will, 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 will set up. But familiar spirits that used to come to that location will not start haunting people now because they are area. And, 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 and we, we have problems like Everywhere I turn in America, left and right, this land belonged to uh, the, uh, the First Nation. <laughs> now people are even making a, a deal. Do you have a reservation? What? What did you say? I'm from the reservation? <laughs> you can't say anything here in America, bro. Start learning Tamil. It's easy. <laughs> Are you following? So, so every land belongs to them. They were there. <laughs> the history is not good. But once the blood of Jesus has paid for it, you are redeemed. Amen. But when are you going to stop familiarizing with demonic spirits that is going to put guilt trap on you and forever will tell you to apologize? If not, we won't go. For the last 200 years, People have been apologizing, reconciling. They have never left. Mm -hmm. So God is waiting for you to go and possess the land. Mm -hmm. Not negotiate. Mm -hmm. I remember somehow the grace is on me. Every time I buy a property, the Lord would tell me, don't negotiate, go and buy it. Don't plead, don't beg, please. You know, if you give us $100, you think God is that cheap? You're asking for a $100 discount in a 500,000 property? Do you understand what I'm saying? I came to this property, the Lord said the same thing. When I bought my, uh, our church in Malaysia, when I planted the work among the location where usually Indians cannot prosper, it's a rich location of the Chinese. And the Lord told us, go there and plant it. And many of the pastor friends that I had, they laughed. You know, they will come, right? If God tells me, they will come. Amen. Yes. Full stop. And the church is growing even till now. Amen. And the Lord told me, don't negotiate. I called my elders. I said, don't negotiate. Buy it. Don't discount 1%, 2%. Buy it. While, you were, while we familiarly negotiate, someone can take away the possession that God has for you. You get what I'm saying? This location was the same. The day when I put my feet, the Lord said, buy the land, don't negotiate. So whatever price was given, we took it over. I want you to understand, God, this kind of attacks will only go away when you know how to possess the land. Sorry, this is the past. They built a house over the a graveyard or whatever not. Since I'm here, it belongs to me in Jesus' name. Yes. I remember I went to, uh, went to my cousin's house. I was 17 years old. I went to conduct a uh, one-week revival meeting. What revival? To my cousin's house. I was 17. Which church is going to invite me, right? So I said, well, if the pastors are going to invite, it's never going to happen. I'll invite myself to my cousin's house. So I went to the house. They are people of prayer. They are seeing me for the first time. They know that I'm a, 
touched by God, my cousin's son, so so so. But they never seen me. I invited myself, went there. I said, let us pray. So every day we prayed. In the night, about 3,000 insects will come because they build right in the midst of a jungle. It's a first housing estate. And where cleared by cemetery. And in the night, these demons who control that area will come and talk to me. How dare these people will come in and they will challenge. And I was wondering why are they challenging. Then I came to know the powers they have planted. Then we've one week of fasting and prayer. You know, I'm telling you what. Of course, anybody get irks when insects are crawling, you know, because of the light, they're attracted to it. So I began to pray, Lord, as long as this one week of meetings are going to take place, no insects will come. I'm telling you, I wish... We have cameras in those days to take this kind of photos, man. The insects will be all around the house except like a radius wherever I'm standing. They won't come near me. It's a radius. They all will see the circle. It will not come near me. It will be everywhere else in the house. So we have to literally switch off the light so that they will not keep going inside the house. Demonic spirits will come. So we begin to cleanse the house, cleanse the land. Now I can keep on giving you this kind of story and I'm certain you have those stories as well. Demonic spirits attach themselves. Now if you have things in your house taken as a memento, given to by someone, you went to India, you went to China, you went to Africa, you picked up stuff, you picked up clothes and designs, things that have certain kind of, you know, uh, voodoo stuff, you don't know, throw them away. Because they usually will attach themselves. One of the ways the Malaysian people, now not Malaysian people, the witchcraft fellow sorcerers in Malaysia, when they want to sleep with a girl, they like this girl, all they got to do, give me a handshake, brother. All they will talk nicely. The moment they touch, they will, they will sweep like that. They have already put that oil into your hand. You know what happens in the night? That girl will come to his house no matter where he's staying. That spirit will bring her there. So nobody, you know, when I'm doing ministry there, we have to be aware, the local areas, how they operate. You got to be mindful. Don't give your hand. Don't say hello. Don't. Because demonic spirits will work in certain locations more powerfully. The Christians are people who always walk away instead of walking in victory and possessions. Are you with me? You know what attracts demonic spirits towards the church? It's the house of God. What will demons do? They will fight the house of God. Hello? Did you know that or you don't? I got to ask you to sign another pledge. When you're signing for church memberships, be ready to fight for the house of God because this place, the demons love it. If it's a church, the demons will come. If it's a light, the darkness will come. You must know how to fight for it. You got to play, keep the place clean. You got to walk in love. You got to oh, this is just full of problems. Oh, that's what the demons do. They will fight. Now, when you go into the hospital, the hospital is full of disease. Isn't it? And that's what they have to do. They have to keep it clean. How? Do they spray over your nose? Nothing. A hospital is a place where all the diseases in different rooms are being taken care. Yet you walk in with such a faith and you're praying that God will keep you okay, correct? Yes. What do you think the house of God is? There is a sanitizing, anointing, sanctification that is inside your spirit that is designed to fight what the enemy is doing. Yes. You've got to give in to possess what God has given to you. God is building a bunch of warriors, not a bunch of wimps. Right. Yes. Amen. Some people's behavior is like Winnie the Pooh, bro. I, I tell you, it's so cute and nice, but it's not meant for a warrior church. They're always running after the honey, what I can get out of it, but they're not willing to fight for it. I want you to understand, God wants us to be aware of points of attack. Number two. Through objects, stolen or by deceit. When you have stolen objects, taken by deceit from people, when things are in your house like this, you know, these demonic powers will come against you. Joshua chapter 7, 
verses 11 to 13, you know when uh, Joshua lost the war with the fight against Ai, and they were crying and the weeping, and God said, Israel has sinned. They have transgressed my covenant that I've commanded them. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen and lied and put them among their own belongings. Therefore, the people of Israel cannot stand before their enemies. Look at what happens when you are compromised. You lose your authority to stand in front of the enemy. They turn their backs before their enemies because they have become devoted for destruction. I will be with you no more unless you destroy the devoted things from amongst you. Can you, can you handle, I can handle this passage, everything that this passage is saying. The only line that I cannot handle is when God says, I will not be with you anymore. That part I can't. Because God draws, draws this line, you see. It's either me or that person. It's me or the unholy thing. And it is unfair for Joshua to lose the entire war just because Achan and his family did this thing, you know. It's very unfair. And sometimes it is unfair when the whole church have to enter into a warfare just because one thing comes in through someone. It is unfair, I've seen pastor's families, godly families entering into warfare mode within their home when someone in their family is doing bad things, dark things. And because it was not addressed, it was condoned, it was covered. And so when they are praying, there's no power. When they are worshipping, it doesn't rise up. Slowly they will start losing the desire to pray because there's sin in the camp. Amen. That is why the Bible says as often as we can come together for prayer because prayer will make sure the fire is burning. I want you to think about it. So the points of attack, another way, could be all through objects. Stolen. Deceit. Don't be so alarmed when people give you a Rolex watch out of nothing, man. You just don't know from where it was stolen for with money it was bought. Today, nobody's thinking about, oh, praise God, you know, I've got this biggest thing. When you know you don't deserve it, don't take it. You got to have just enough common sense. Ministry is notorious for that. I think a lot of people in, the, in, 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 in this game are getting confused with blessings. God has a way of saying what is holy and what is unholy. You get what I'm saying? That goes on for unholy alliances, relationships. I'm not even touching that tonight. I'm just taking some pointers where we overlook familiar spirits. Joshua 7.13, get up, consecrate the people and say, consecrate yourselves tomorrow for thus says the Lord, God of Israel. They are devoted things in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away these devoted things from amongst you. So there is, if you are lacking authority, is there an area in your life that you have opened your door? Until you sort those things out, then the anointing come back. Now, another word, another point, through disobedience and rebellion. First Samuel 15, 23, for rebellion is as the sin of divination and presumption is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Do you realize that what rebellion and presumption does to a person, it will reject the word of the Lord. Never grow up in assumption. Means I think this is what the Lord says. You know, I, I, can I ask you something? If you believe God is so real and he speaks to you, how can you be thinking about it? You know he's a person, he's talked to you, this is the line. There's nothing to think. You know exactly what he said. The fact that you say, I think, that means he did not say it. You are assuming he said it. You're helping God. You want to do something, you put him, help him. Because God is a real person. He doesn't need your help to think what he's saying. He's so clear what he's going to say. I'm telling you seriously, man. I'm not, I'm not trying to put you down. I'm, I walked with God for so many years. I go for his counsel. 
And Angeline and I, every time we'll say, do you remember what God said, right? We just do it. That, that, that's what it is. Even now she shared with you about the emotions and not coming. We, when we talked about it, what did God say? That, that's all. There's nothing to think. I think this is what God is saying. So when we walk in assumption or presumption, look at that. Or rebellion, it opens the door for familiar spirits to come in and confuse us of our consecration. Okay? When we are spiritually strong, we say, God told me to do it. When you want to do your own thing, uh, God has changed his mind. Huh? Really? Okay. Are you following? Now another one, this is my favorite. <laughs> Physical appetite, abuse of medication, addictions to stuff or chemicals. Matthew 6.25, Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or no, about your body, what you will put on. Or maybe he's talking about weight. No, about dressing. Okay. Is not your life more than food and the body more than your clothing? Is there addictions Jesus has been addressing about? Familiar spirit that can come? I, when I did my counseling internship, I went to a hospital on my, during my master's. We went to the hospital to minister to, or not minister, actually, I was an internship right up to write reports. To girls, man, the anorexia, you know. They look like skeleton, you know, skeleton. But in the mirror, their mind projects they are fat. You know how sad in the natural when I see they have to, some of them have to go through uh, shocks. I've seen that. We have to write reports. They'll be going through electrical shock. That's part of the therapy. They'll be throwing out. They'll go through fits and they'll have to inject them, medicate them. They'll be okay for a week because they speak to spirits. They, talk, they speak to third parties. They talk to people. They say, this fellow is telling me what to do. When you see demons, what they do to people. And then when people are okay, you think you're fat. What, what's wrong with you? Why why you keep cursing your own body? And many girls are telling you, woman, you, you start speaking right. You keep confusing your body, your chemical will work against you. Are you following? No, if you're fat, just accept it and work on it. That, that's what you got to say, not, not the other way. Don't curse your body, don't do things. Don't speak the wrong things. Don't confuse your eye. What are you saying? Your eye will have to see right so your body will be full of light or darkness. Work on the echo is coming back again. Are, are you following? Now, I'm not going to touch too much. It's, it's sensitive. But I'm talking about familiar spirits. Abuse. Many times when people are dependent, you know, some of the, those days, they make people dependent on certain chemicals. America is notorious for allowing marijuana to have a free go because they could not. Can you tell me why this is happening? Okay, low down the, the uh, monitors, low it down. They could not solve the depression, the post-traumatic depression after Vietnam War. They could not solve it. So they allow marijuana. So today we have clinics. Approved. When I was, uh, Michael Erskine and I, we went to California for our bike training. We were shocked with those uh, plantations. Marijuana plantations with rifle armed guards, bro. It's 24-7. Because we finish late night, we have to come back. We see all these fellas, it's approved drug. What? You come to Singapore, marijuana, 300 grams, you'll be hanged to death. You come to the other side. <laughs> I want you to think about addictions because they made us believe that you cannot live without it. You follow it? Yeah. Familiar spirits that will come. Now I got a few more, but are you learning something? That's more important. Few more, two more only, two more. Few more is two more. Now, this is an important word I think we should pay attention. Another point of attack is called regression, okay? Usually we don't use the word now. Regression is the opposite of progression. Regressing means going behind. Luke 9.62, Jesus said, 
No one who puts his hand to the plow. Now fit, fill in the blanks. Come on, what did Jesus say? No one who puts a plow and... Come on, let's all read together, English people. One, two, three, go. No one who puts his hand to the plow and... Will you dare to look at someone and tell, you keep looking back, you are actually not fit for the kingdom. Would you dare to say it? You want me to preach the way Jesus preaches? I will dare to say it. There are people who are not really fit for the kingdom because their attitude all the time looks back. Jesus says, hey, who said this? Yeah, he welcomes everybody. He died for everybody. But he also says there are fellows who will keep looking back. They're not fit for the kingdom. Can you handle that? Do you have a personality, a familiar spirit personality of all the time looking back from your commitments? You open your mouth and say, I will do this for God and keep looking back. Look at what he can, he has the power to come and pronounce over your head or my head. You're not fit for the kingdom. One guy, as I said, I just read this report about pastors failing away. And they say, well, if I'm in the ministry, I don't think so I can feed my family, uh, provide uh, future savings and all that. So I decided to leave. Not only the ministry, the church, the whole thing, the whole deal, so that he can focus to build his business on. I wonder when we stand before God's judgment, what's the answer going to be? What about you and I? The word look in Greek is blepo, see, perceive by senses. In other words, we keep perceiving the world is becoming extensive. God is keeping me cheap. The world is becoming expensive. Why must I give 10% to God? Why must I give offerings? Myself keep it to God. Oh, offering is the Old Testament and we come up all the garbage inside. One way we become into this. Then on the other side, you have the fellows who steal from the church. I'm not saying about not giving your tithe. I'm talking about some of the fellows who are preaching, bro. The next 70 seconds, those who run to me with the next $700, you're going to be blessed. <laughs> they are the daylight robbers. God doesn't really need to do that. You know what God, he says, go and count the cost before giving. He's so settled in. He tells you to go and count and write a check. God will multiply your giving. Amen. That's God. If you say, God, I only have a dollar to spare, he will multiply that dollar and do big things out of you. Yeah. He's not looking for the exact amount, bro. He is looking for your heart that gives. No wonder I'm not giving, I'm having enough offerings in this church because I'm always preaching like this. <laughs> but more than offerings, I have gained you. You're more important to me than money. Do you understand? If we have less, let's do less, but more faith. Amen. We'll take a little bit slower, but we'll reach it. We'll get it done. Amen. Amen. You see, the word perceived by senses, looking back, and, and the word back, in Greek, opiso, time and direction. When you keep looking back, you will lose your spiritual time and your spiritual direction. It will create confusion in your walk all the time. Because when you look back, I want you to give you an example, okay? Now, this is where I'm walking in God's direction. And every time I look back, it puts me on the wrong side now, correct? Yeah. Then I've got to make bigger turns all the time to come back to the same direction God wants me to. Every time you look back, you're double time backsliding stage. Your going back to God is always harder than the first one. Because demons are blocking your path. You give them the right to keep blocking your path, you see. Only to understand, that's why Jesus said, those who put their hands to the plow and keep looking back at the world or what I'm going to lose, what my family is going to lose. I can't provide for my family like the others do. Tell me, brother, my, my, my brother and sister whose father and mother, your first duty for your children is provide the kingdom of God. More than money is to provide them the kingdom. Don't always say you have to think about money and bring your children the ways of the world. 
That is why we are losing our family, you see. I don't have to, I told my children also the same thing. I can't promise money, but I'll teach you how to pray. Because prayer provides. You got to walk with God, bro. Got to walk with God. Because I'm, I don't have eternal life. I'll die one day. But when I teach you to pray, Father, God will take care of you, you see. You get what I'm saying? Five, ten more minutes, we'll wrap it up, okay? Now, regression is the opposite of progression. Now, we're talking about familiar spirits. Now, these are so customized. Now, if you are not moving forward, you're moving backward. Is it true? Yeah. <laughs> when you don't push yourself towards the promise of God, then you're letting the waves pull you from behind you. I can give you examples from scuba diving. I can tell you jumping into the ocean. All the kind of stories I can tell you when you don't anchor what happens. You are drifting away. You are drifting always on the mercy of the waves. Lester Samuel was one of the men of God. He passed on. You know, he, he, he changed America and, and, and the mission field. Okay. And uh, he said this statement which is very interesting. He said, he was already in his 70s. He said, I'm living a progressed life. He said, there are many men of God who started with me in the ministry, but by the time they reach 60s, they are sitting in their wheelchair. They are sitting at home, don't want to serve God. Because they have done it, they are retired, they are sitting. They have decided to sit, so all the gifts and the callings of God, they had left them. And not only that, he made a very important statement. When the callings of God leaves them, even sometimes supernatural health leaves them too. Right. Why? Because you have given yourself to die. My brothers and sisters, be mindful. If you want to have, keep your body, use it for God. What glory does God get in having us sick and die? Right. Say, God, give me the strength that I need. Till you decide to take me away, I need my full strength so I can serve for God. Ask God, dedicate this time to Jesus. And then he said this, I'm living a progress life that will come, listen carefully, from the decisions you make to handle your everyday life. The challenges of storms and trials, those decisions that you make to keep your vow intact. From the demonic attacks against you and your family, the decisions you make to make sure what you said you are called for, you are doing it. Those decisions will keep you progressing forward. Don't find the first excuse to take off your vows. Don't find for the first excuse. Oh, pastor, but you know, right? I know, but this is what the Bible says. How is that? Proverbs 11.23, I want to show you a verse, but I'm not going to talk about it. It's an interesting scripture. Because I studied the Hebrew of the word desire, I found a very interesting one. 11.23 says, the desire of the righteous ends only in good. The expectation of the wicked in wrath. Now go to Proverbs 21.25. Be assured, uh, wrong scripture, 21.25. Proverbs 21.25. The desire of the sluggard or the lazy person kills him. For his hand refused to labor. Now you find the word desire is a common denominator. It becomes a servant to the person who is having the word desire. If he's in the heart of a diligent, he will work. If he's in the heart of a lazy person, he will be lazy. So desire by itself has the power to change. You can tutor this desire in you. Towards God. Don't find all the reasons why I don't want to do things. If you are a swimmer, you'll find all the reason to swim through. I just want you to understand, those people who have done things in their life have faced the same problems that you and I have faced. And yet they live life and they live enough to share it. To be true and to be honest. In the last 50 or the last 60 years, 
we are calling this age called the golden years. You know, we are recovering industrial growth, exponential growth, touching Mars and touching space and people are becoming, there are more millionaires on earth than ever before. You are able to achieve your dreams in these good times. You are saying you really can't serve God because somehow I think we put our hands to the plow and we are looking back. Let's think about something what happens when a person is attacked by their familiar spirit called regression? They are no longer excited in the things of God, His church, or the people of God. They are okay to say hello to a stranger, but they find it difficult to say hello to Sister Rebecca. Just an example. Okay? Because I'm familiar, you see. They can talk all their Christian stories to a person on the car park, but they find it difficult to open their mouth when they see a person in the blood of Christ. How is that possible? You are attracted towards darkness, but you repel against the light. How is that possible? Huh? Are you following? And you think, what is inside us? You've got to watch over your heart. I'm concerned. Look at that. They will be careless about their commitment to Jesus and their desire to build the kingdom. Their own reasoning and excuses becomes more powerful than their faith. You know what, Pastor? You know what I think? You know why I can't? They have a million reasons and they think that's valid. More than their faith when Jesus died for them on the cross. Tell me what's more valid. You see? I want you to think about that with carefully. Do you know, even if I, this ring, I don't know why I'm wearing the ring. It's just for everybody else to see, I think. Because I'm still married to Angeline, even if I'm not wearing a ring, it doesn't matter really to me. I guess the birds and dogs in my property have to see it. I don't know. Because I'm not playing this, this. Whether I take or put it, it's, I'm still married in heart. I'm still serving Jesus no matter where I am. So I want you to know what regression does. You are ruled by feelings and assumption rather than decisions and faithfulness. I feel like serving today, tomorrow I'm not. Oh, my, my, you know, my this and my that. And everything is real and valid. But your love for Jesus overrides everything else, you see. I want you to understand, brothers. God is building an army. God is holding on to us. You know, I want to finish with this line. In many religions of the world today, they are doing, they are doing impossible tasks to please their God. They walk on sandals of nails, you know. Have you seen in videos and devotion? They walk on fire. They poke holes with long rods, iron rods, pleasing God. They walk thousand steps to up to the mountains to please God and it happens every year I can show you photos but I just don't want to defile the presence of God in the church I, I've done it before I've thought in Bible colleges where the Lord has rebuked me for defiling his presence by showing this stuff you know so usually I say you want to go and google yourself go and see it don't don't I will not show anymore People have done that. All that Jesus told us, follow me. That's all he said. Two words. And we find it the most difficult to do. We keep thinking about it over and over. Jesus said, follow me. These familiar spirits that will come to destroy us. I don't know. You see, for me and Angeline, that's our act. If you leave any residue behind in my Singapore house, then the enemy will work against our mind to go back, isn't it? I've got nothing there, bro, besides the family, besides the two other boys. Other than that, we only have stones there. Relationships matters. Everything is here. You die, you die here. Are you following me? We have to have single-minded person. One thing I do and one thing I'm after. Remember what Jesus said? Forgetting all those which are behind, I pursue. 
Do you have this single-minded obedience with God? If not, familiar spirits will pull us down. God wants us to love him single-minded. No matter what, I'll do it. I remember when I went through the biggest problems of my life, I keep telling you, you know, uh, one pastor came and told me, Stephen, you, you look like a guy who have lost his limp, you know, legs, you know. You are hoping with one leg. I, I told him, pastor, since I've got only one leg, I will hop faster and faster towards the kingdom. Amen. But I will not stop because Jesus died for me. Single-minded devotion. And then God will trust us. The ability to overcome our challenges, our feelings, our setbacks. Familiar spirits will break their hold over our thinking patterns, our talking patterns, because they know we are single-minded. We are zooming towards God. Can we all stand up together? We're going to pray. I know this is a little bit longer than I thought, but I think at this time, I had another dream two days ago. And I, so once again, I declare God is releasing victory over our lives. Amen. In this dream, very interestingly, no, I, I, it lasted three seconds, I think. I don't know. I just walked into a house and I saw a big serpent. It saw me, it took off and it ran off, which is great, fantastic. I don't have to struggle, don't have to fight, don't have to pray. In three seconds, it ran off. So when they run off, don't find them. Don't wonder. You run off, that's what I want. That means victory, God is cleansing the church. Amen. God is giving victory over our individual lives. Amen. God is giving victory over sickness and disease and whatever else is putting you down. Amen. God is giving victory over finances, whatever else that's holding you back. Amen. 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 So I, I, that is why I thought now we cannot become familiar with these spirits again. God has given you victory. Get familiar with God. Get familiar with the power of God. Get used to the anointing. Can we take a moment to pray? Father, I want to thank you, Father. Would you lift up your hands? Everything that is familiar against you, bind it, pull it down, throw it into the rubbish bin. Discouragement, depression, negative words, negative thoughts, double-mindedness, assumption, presumption. Dump it and throw it. When you put your hands to the plow, God, help me. I don't want to look back. I don't want to look back. The most difficult statement from the Savior's mouth is when He says, I will not be with you anymore. That was in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, Jesus said, you're not fit for the kingdom. Father, I pray, would you make me fit for the kingdom? I bring my body into subjection, my feelings into subjection, my circumstances into subjection. I want to bind the work of the spirit of regression in Jesus' name. You said every place the sole of your foot will touch. I've given that to you. See, God is giving us victory when we possess things. We will have victory in your ministry when you possess the service that you're doing for God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray God cleanse our hearts, cleanse our minds. Go through every other file, reference stories in our memory banks. Remove those things that hurts us in the name of Jesus. Cleanse us through the blood. Let there be an inner surgery. We break grounds with every demonic powers that we are set free through the blood of the Lamb. We want to thank you, Father. All those who walk in this place will experience the freedom of the Holy Spirit in worship, in the Word, in serving, in loving one another. We give you the glory, Father. We pray for physical energy and strength in Jesus' name. We pray for a divine health to come in and strengthen. We pray the first love to be restored. We pray for the joy of our salvation to return. We pray for the joy of the Lord is our strength. In the name of Jesus, we thank you the house of God is a place of celebration. 
we come back to the basics. I want to thank you and honor you for your power. I thank and honor you for your grace. I thank and honor you for the tonight and the words that are giving to us, Father. Let that be power. I pray for my brothers and sisters tonight and those who are watching online. We pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God will help them to cleanse their house. Lord, help us to know things if there are in the house. Possessions that we have forgotten over time. Reveal to us so that we can clean the house up in Jesus' name. Songs and CDs and stuff which are unholy, uncommon, help us to throw them away, discard it because it's your house. Wash us out. Help us, Father, to do it right before you tonight so that our swords will be sharp. Our prayers will be anointed. Our spirit man will be strong. We will be battle ready. I thank and honor you for tonight. I pray the peace of God will follow everybody. And deliverance belongs to the Lord. We thank you and honor you. In Jesus name let us all say. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a wonderful clap offering. God bless you.